uh, stocks had been rising on anticipation that the Federal Reserve would raise interest rates. So there you go. You know, bad news for the country is always good news for Wall Street, evidently. Uh, Asian stocks, however, were higher. They are uh, happy that it looks like this uh, extend and pretend is going to uh, go on a little bit longer. They have now, uh, this economic bubble has dodged another pen. Another story that's up on Infowars.com, New York Police Department Union President Patrick Lynch says only police are qualified to judge the actions of the police. Citizens are increasingly being removed from the decision-making process. That's right. They're going to do whatever they wish. Along those lines, we're going to talk about what was not mentioned in the GOP debate, and that, of course, is the war on private property that goes by the name of the war on drugs. You would think, perhaps, wouldn't you, that the GOP that is all about private property and taxes uh, that's one of the few rights that they seem to recognize. And yet, through Ronald Reagan's uh, civil asset forfeiture program, since that's been in place, they have been stealing people's property. Law enforcement is basically funding themselves in many jurisdictions. And now that there's a pushback in California and some other states to try to rein in this literal highway robbery, this literal theft by the police. They've turned, this is the way it corrupts our government to have prohibition. It's turned the police into outright thieves. That's the way many of them fund their departments, as I mentioned. You don't get due process that's guaranteed. You're not convicted in a court of your peers. Instead, what they do is they seize your property, never charging you with a crime. They call it civil, which means that you have to take them to court and sue them civilly in order to get your property back. That's one of the lies about this, that it's a civil action. The other lie is that they charge the property itself with committing a crime. But, of course, whether it's that or whether it's the abuse that is committed on citizens, both of those are being driven from the federal government, from Homeland Security, by the Department of Justice, by others who are now trying to stop any blocking of civil asset forfeiture. They're now trying to stop any accountability of police who are out of control. As we've mentioned many times, the police, like any other profession, is going to have good people and it's going to have bad people in it. Frank Serpico said that. He said you're always going to have bad people. The question is, how? what do you do? Do you purge the bad people or do you defend them? If you purge them, you improve the system. If you protect them, you create systemic corruption. And that's what we have with the New York Police Union saying nobody is going to judge us but the police. There you go. We'll be right back with Wayne Madsen. Stay with us. Joining us now is uh, Wayne Madsen. He's a regular contributor to Infowars.com. We're going to talk to him. He recently spoke to a 9-11 conference in the Northeast. He's going to talk to us about uh, 28pages.org as well as uh, what we were just talking to uh, Paul Joseph Watson about. He has uh, information about uh, uh, what's going on in the Northeast with massive immigration from Muslims. We have massive immigration from all over the world into the United States. And of course, the problem is that there's no effort to try to assimilate anyone. We have this article from the New York Times today, which is saying the White House campaign urges legal immigrants to become voting citizens. This is something we've been telling you for a very long time. But I guess now you can believe it since the New York Times is saying that, okay? They, we were conspiracy theorists when we said that Obama is opening up the borders to bring in immigrants who will vote for him, and he's going to register them, uh, make it possible for them to vote before the next election. We were telling you that because we are not conspiracy theorists. We're conspiracy analysts, okay? And the conspiracy is on Obama's side, okay? It's not in our mind. We're telling you this a very long time. We were telling you that the U.S., was equipping and training ISIS. It's now being reported by the mainstream media all over the place. Totally ignored in the GOP debate, of course. But what they're saying about this uh, uh, urging legal immigrants to become voting citizens, Obama is doing far more than that. Uh, the New York Times reports White House officials announced the start of a nationwide campaign on Thursday to encourage legal immigrants to become American citizens. They say it could add millions of voters to the electorate in time for the presidential election next year. Of course, everybody admits and understands that they will all be voting Democrat for the most part. 8.8 .8 million legal residents, they say, in the country are eligible, eligible to become citizens. White House officials say they were trying to make it easier to complete the final steps for citizenship. You know, they... The first steps are you just walk over an open border. 
because he's incentivized a massive welfare state for you, done things like a war on drugs in your country to destroy your economy, to make it incredibly violent, and then, say, and then come over here because we got this pot of gold on the other side of the river. So those are the first steps. The final steps are this. They will offer practice tests on cell phones for the civics exam that immigrants must pass. And I guess the question is, is that going to be in English or is that going to be in any their choice of 80 languages, like they get their choice of uh, education? They also say that they will hold preparatory workshops in rural areas. Applicants will also be able to pay the fee, still a hefty $680, they say. That's all it costs to come into America and become a citizen. It costs nothing to come into America, but you know, if you want a citizenship, you can buy it for $680 and pass a test that they will help you pass. And oh, by the way, you can put that now on a credit card, you know, citizenship and welfare with the easy payment plan. They say the White House is working with regional immigrant groups as well to organize more than 70 citizenship workshops and 200 naturalization ceremonies in the coming week alone. And they're getting high name celebrity profiles like Fernando Valenzuela, Mexican-born uh, pitcher for the L.A. Dodgers as citizenship ambassadors. That's that's it. So we're going to talk to Wayne Madsen about that, as well as the 9-11 conference that he was at. Of course, we've had the money bomb for the last couple of days. We have now extended those specials. We are going to extend that until we hit our goal of a million dollars. Thank you so much for supporting that. And we are extending as a thank you to you free shipping through midnight tonight, as well as the discounts on the products that we have at InfoWars. Uh, life.com. Of course, one of those is Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine. We still have that as a 15% discount along with the free shipping. That's our Ultra Pure Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine, harvested from deep earth crystals 8,000 feet below the Earth's surface. We're bringing this Ultra Pure, ultra powerful iodine to you at the most affordable prices out there. And it's even more affordable now. 15% off, free shipping. This will sell out this weekend. The elite know that you need iodine to live. That's why they took it out of the food supply. That's why we're buying up iodine supplies around the world, and we're making that available to you for your health and for your preparation. Now is a good time to stock up. Free shipping, 15% off. It will be out of stock this weekend. We've already run out of stock on Deep Cleanse and Super Mail as part of the Money Bomb specials that we've offered on our site. You'll also see... Brain Force and Silver Bullet for 20% off. You'll see Oxy Powder and Secret 12 for 15% off. Let's go to, and again, that's InfoWarsLife.com. Let's go to uh, Wayne Madsen now. And uh, thank you for joining us, Wayne. Hi, good to be with you. Tell us about uh, the 9-11 conference that you were speaking at uh, last week. Well, the theme of this year's conference, and it was in New York at the uh, West Park Presbyterian Church on the west side of Manhattan, um, and uh, it concentrated on uh, these 28 still classified pages from the Joint Congressional Inquiry on the Failures of uh, Intelligence uh, before 9-11. Now, the former chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, Senator, former Senator Bob Graham of Florida, has urged uh, the administration to release these 28 pages, as have a bipartisan uh, group of senators and members of the House, including Senator Rand Paul, Senator from New York, Kirsten Gillibrand, Senator Ron Wyden, a Democrat from Oregon, and on the House side, Republican representatives Walter Jones, uh, T Thomas Massey uh, of Kentucky, and uh, Democratic Representative Stephen Lynch of Massachusetts. And um, look, the, the release of these pages is not going to solve the crime of 9-11, but it's certainly going to start opening up some doors uh, to uh, allow 9-11 researchers to proceed with the, uh, what, what the 9-11 Commission failed to do was investigate the reasons and the cause of 9-11. All, all they had to offer was what the country had to do to uh, further uh, destroy our, our Bill of Rights, our, our yes. constitutional rights. So uh, it's a step. It's a step in the right direction. Some people think it's a diversion. Uh, that was not the theme at the conference. We, of course, heard from uh, author um, uh, and, and uh, Professor Lance DeHaven-Smith from Florida State University, who, of course, has done an awful lot 
on uh, not conspiracy theory, but as you mentioned earlier, conspiracy analysis. And uh, he considers these types of crimes to be called, uh, that he calls them state crimes against democracy or SCAD, S-C-A-D. Um, so Precisely. When we have them selling us a national security state, which has become a religion post 9-11, you know, yesterday was Constitution Day. I tweeted out Wayne, I said, you know, we, we enacted a, uh, a constitution, a declaration of independence to declare our independence from kings. But post 9-11, our rulers used that to publicly shred the constitution and declare their independence from a rule of law. If they are going to do that, here we are 14 years later, they won't tell us what they said they did wrong. We can't know right. about that. But right. we're supposed to trust them. We're supposed to turn over all of our freedoms. We're supposed to overturn and destroy the legal system. We're supposed to overturn and destroy law enforcement that we used to have in this country. To the However they say to do this because they just invoke the magic words of national security. I talked to Thomas Drake, who's one of the NSA whistleblowers, and he said, look... Before 9-11, they were deliberately telling people, downplaying any, uh, any intel that they would get about terrorism. They didn't want them looking at that. Now, we can draw our own conclusions about that. He's not going to draw the conclusions for people, but he will tell people what was going on with that. They were deliberately downplaying it, and then immediately after 9-11, they play that up to completely remake everything. We need to see what they don't want us to see. That's one of the key things that has happened, of course, has been the secret government that doesn't tell us anything that they're doing. We don't have a right to know anything about what our government is doing, whether it's trade treaties. We're not stakeholders anymore. They've made that very clear. We need to see what their so-called incompetence is, even if it's their official story, because we've seen lie after lie after lie in their official conspiracy theory. Right, and, and we also heard from uh, John Perkins, who, of course, his seminal work, uh, Confessions of an Economic Hitman uh, really exposed the deep state. And he spoke a lot about what uh, he used to be involved with on behalf of the Wall Street bankers and the Central Intelligence Agency and overthrowing foreign governments and suggested that's absolutely what occurred on 9-11. So uh, th this um, uh, sort of discipline uh, uh, of, of research is, is starting to I, I think uh, go, it's going mainstream. The other uh, important thing is uh, the presidential candidates are starting to uh, they're starting to ask them questions about where they stand on releasing the 28 pages. Apparently, Carly Fiorina was asked, and she said she's in favor of it. And uh, Jeb Bush, of course, was asked about it, and he said he didn't know what the uh, 28 pages were. Uh, <laughs> I, I, of course, we would get that from him. He, he hasn't really come clean on what he what he was doing on 9-11 himself. When he was, uh, Ask him where his brother Marvin was. Like, hey, hey. Yeah, yeah. Well, Jeb also wants Margaret Thatcher on the U.S. $10 bill. I think yeah. uh, uh, Jeb, Jeb is uh, very confused and <laughs> once again shows what happens when there's a lot of incest in a blue blood family from uh, originally from Connecticut. Well, you know, Wayne, he said, uh, Margaret Thatcher goes, well, of course, that'd be illegal, but what the heck? And uh, right. <laughs> as my son right. said, yeah, since when has the law ever constrained anyone in the Bush family? That's, <laughs> that's, that's well, not even I mean, a joke he, he, anymore. I mean, that's the reality of it. You know, they call him, as he said, they, they call me Jeb. I earned that. Uh, that was, I thought, the best line from the very first GOP debate. I, I still want to know, and that would be the question I would ask him, is that what does it mean to be a Jeb, and how does one earn that title? <laughs> well, right, and he won't even use his last name. He uses Jeb with an exclamation yeah. point following. Yeah. It sort of reminds me of that, uh, the guy, uh, the, the rock star who came up with this weird uh, symbol, and he said, I'm, I'm the rock star formerly known as Prince. So I guess Jeb is the... <laughs> politician formerly known as Bush. That's right. Well, we all know why he would want to avoid that last name. Stay with us. We're going to be right back with Wayne Madsen. We're talking to Wayne Madsen. I want to get back to Wayne and ask him a little bit more about the uh, 28 pages. I want to get his comment on what Jeb exclamation mark said the other night at the uh, GOP debate. Uh, before I do, I was just handed this uh, note by Nico, our producer, there is a Flash show special that we're doing. In, a, in addition to the free shipping, we're now doing a uh, show special, and that is 25% off Survival Shield X2. I just uh, put that out there as 15% uh, off. They've increased that to 25% off of both Survival Shield X2 and DNA Force. 
Again, X2 is our nascent iodine, super high quality nascent iodine formula.